Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the January, or fe- February, feels like January, feels cold. The first Friday forum for the month of February. I'd like to thank, all number one, all of you for being here today. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Purveya Health, for continuing to support First Friday forums. And without further ado, we'll introduce today's speaker, Mr. Brian Doudna, Executive Director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. Mr. Doudna. First of all, thank you, and I want to just give compliments. He actually got the last name right. I, in my, one of my communities, I worked in Porch County for a decade, and it took four years before my board chair got that name right at our annual meeting. So just want to say uh, thanks for the invite. Today I'm not going to talk a lot about economic development itself. I'm going to really talk about what the EBC and how we're transforming the organization and what our next three years, the strategic direction we're going and how we can start collaborating and engaging the community more and more as a part of our economic development strategy. So the theme up here is really setting the course, and you're going to see the scope of work for uh, our strategy, and, and we're going to do a dip, deep dive in a couple of those categories. A little background about myself. As you can tell, I'm probably not that young anymore. Uh, so I've been pretty much around the state. Uh, I started out in La Crosse, as a, uh, in the Sparta and La Crosse area as a Main Street manager, went up to Rhinelander, Manaqua, ran a countywide EDC up there, very similar to what we have here. Then down to Stevens Point Plover, um, ran their countywide chamber, Economic Development Corporation, actually ran uh, their W-2 agency. Uh, also, we were their job center manager. Um, let's just, and we had a for-profit corporation that actually built buildings as well. So, a uh, very, um, v- very diverse uh, project over there. And then a decade in Eau Claire County, running a uh, countywide EDC there. And then for family reasons, I needed to get to Madison. So, actually, was the first full-time director of the Wisconsin Economic Development Association. And at that trade association, think of a statewide chamber for all the economic development professionals in the state. We actually trained people on economic development, so gave them certifications, uh, educational programs, but we also lobbied on public policy. And now this is 120 days as of today. Uh, I started October 5th, and so I'm happy to be here. And I truly want to have a decade here. Hopefully I can have a decade here. Uh, and um, enjoy uh, a lifetime um, with you all in the future. I just bring up a a study that I was a volunteer project manager uh, for at the state level uh, called the Be Bold Study. This was when Governor Doyle was uh, transitioning out. He wasn't running for re-election. That study actually uh, was the one that helped form, uh, transform Department of Commerce into what is now the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Just to tell you how we do engagement, we actually had six candidates for governor endorse that strategy. Okay? And Governor Walker won the election, and then he formed WEDC. But the strategy was endorsed by Democrats and Republicans, and, but Governor Walker made it his own and drove that strategy. And my sports loyalties uh, are there for your future reference. But before I get into our overall strategy, if you don't know when you should talk to an economic development corporation, I just want to give you these top seven questions, and we're actually working with financial institutions to get that out to uh, all their customers so that um, during this unique time in our history and in our economy that we can get as much technical assistance out to companies as, uh, as possible. But if you can say you're adding new production space, uh, or equipment, adding new st- staff or technology, um, and or adding a new product line, or exporting a new product, uh, those are the types of things that you should be reaching out to us because all of those questions, if you answer yes to one of them, that's where we can pro- start looking at providing technical assistance on how you can navigate those waters that might be new to you. The thing that about an economic development corporation is Companies may do expansions once or twice in their life cycle, in, in, their, uh, life, uh, in a decade or more. Economic development corporations should be managing expansions for companies five to seven times a year. 
So we should be your concierge to helping you grow. A little uh, information about the numbers. I just want to give credit to Ray York in our, on our staff at the Small Business Development Center uh, staffing, but also all the financial institutions. And probably too small for you. Deidre has this, and she can share the presentation for you. But you can start looking at the amount of investment from all the grants that were, have been made available through the PPP, uh, the SBA, uh, the uh, WEDC, et cetera. So when you start looking at it, um, I mean, it's very large numbers. So key factor here is then with a new round of um, stimulus, uh, I would just want to make sure that any local, uh, local uh, business is really reaching out to their financial institution making sure that if they're eligible for PPP, I'm sure that that's already been handled. But the new round of stimulus also provides for SBA loans uh, from uh, February through September, uh, where you do a 7A uh, type loan uh, for even working capital type. You should be able to get three months of principal interest, is my understanding. Depending on the industry sectors, you might get more, uh, where the SBA actually is paying that. So. That is a, in a form of grant that really is not taken into consideration when we start looking at these activities. But mission critical right now is making sure that our uh, companies have working capital to be successful if they're being, uh, having a distressful um, year and a half. The one thing that we're doing at the EDC, and I want to just give credit to the mayor uh, for bringing this to my attention, is we uh, actually uh, took some of our operating budget with, we normally have an annual meeting and we converted our annual meeting budget to a resiliency grant uh, to support um, local businesses. So if somebody's trying to get online, online sales, things of that nature, uh, Deidre just got an application that you, she can share with your, her members where we have dollars to do search engine optimization and or online sales. It's a match, but what we want to do is make sure we're not trying to change who your provider is, but we want to make sure that um, we don't know how long it's going to get back to uh, before customers get back to normal sh uh, shopping patterns. So search engine optimization, I, we think, is mission critical uh, for all businesses. And uh, when you start looking at how much um, we've converted to online sales in the last uh, six months. So now our engagement process. We are um, launching four different cohorts, and really it's going to be five, but four that we are really focusing on long term as part of our ecosystem of building uh, a uh, stronger economic development uh, collaboration in the county. One is on talent uh, acquisition, and that's with the human resources, and I want to just say we had a meeting on the 28th, and I will just say it went a lot better than I thought it would, uh, so that's very exciting. Um, but. We have, uh, we have proposals, and what we want to do is these cohorts give us the voice of the customer. So EDC staff might have thoughts on, hey, this is what we need to do. This is the direction. But we need feedback from the market to tell us exactly how we should implement and how we need to pivot to be successful in this community, in this county. So we're also uh, looking at launching an in-house training department cohort in March and uh, had in initial meetings with some of the in-house training departments. We had a first meeting of the uh, banking community uh, back in December, and that will be continuing to move forward. And then we have a whole innovation strategy that we just adopted in January, uh, but we'll start working on that um, probably in the second quarter. Uh, as you can imagine, 120 days and we're already doing cohort launches, so we're trying to uh, stagger those for uh, capacity. November 6th, we had a strategic direction or strategic planning session. The four key uh, outcomes from that would be we need to increase the just total number of bodies in the county that are working age. Um, our unemployment rate is low. Our net in-migration, actually, uh, thank God we have people having more kids than deaths. Uh, but otherwise, uh, in-migration is a negative number in Sheboygan County, and that's the one number when I moved here, I was shocked. 
that you had a negative in migration of people relocating to this market. And that has to change, and that's going to be really tied to our um, talent uh, acquisition strategy. Expand the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, talent attraction and development, and then housing affordability. Uh, and we'll get into the terminology of what housing affordability is, but very definitely, if we bring in more talent and more people, we already have a tight housing market. How do we, we need to expand more housing units? And I'm not talking multifamily. We're talking now single family. We have very definitely, and I know the city is doing a housing study, and we'll be looking at that um, information to say how do we uh, navigate moving forward. So November 6th, November 18th, the board adopted this, uh, these statements, and I just highlighted a few points of interest. Encourage private sector investment. Everything the EDC has done on spurring growth and investment, we will continue to do, okay? Um, from helping with applications, and I think uh, we'll probably do more on helping with applications for the employers and actually filling out uh, follow-up reports so that my strategy is, once I get you in the program, I'm going to make sure you can complete the program and fill out the paperwork and you have technical assistance because from my perspective, I got you in that mess or in that red tape. I'm going to make sure you can fill out the red tape, okay? But it, but it also benefits the company to have, more, have a more effective, cost-effective expansion. Second is train the diverse and stable workforce as well as attract and retain. When you're at 2 or 3% unemployment, I mean, you're going to have uh, people moving from one company to the next. We need to start looking at how do we increase the skill sets baseline of everyone in the county so that as they transition between different companies, uh, they are successful and our companies are not having to continually reinvest in baseline training. Uh, great place to live and work and play. Again, we have to change the net in migration uh, to make sure that um, everybody knows the reason I moved here is I know I want to live here and I hope to retire here. Okay? This is a unique community, unique county. You have caring companies and you have caring communities. You don't find that everywhere in the country, everywhere in Wisconsin. So, I mean, this is a unique market. Inclusive community growth, and then also provide resources and expertise. And the other thing that, um, as a number that has popped out to me is, we are the rated number one, if you look at Stats America, it's an Economic Development Administration does rankings. We're ranked number one in the country as an MSA, Metropolitan Statistical Area, for large employers per 10,000 um, workforce. So for the size of our workforce, we have the highest percentage of large employers anywhere else in the nation. That's pretty good. And when you look at poverty levels and everything of that nature, our companies invest in our people. The scary part for me was small business growth. We're at 360 or 362 out of 380. So we have a lot of people working for those companies, but we don't have that economic churn, that startup excitement to get going on the innovation side. And that's what we're going to do on the innovation strategy moving forward. And I would say give credit to the city on the whole innovation strategy and thought process. So statement one, just to give you a little deep dive on what we're going to uh, be working at. Commission studies on housing and retail. The city already was doing the housing study, so thank you, city, for helping us get that first one done. Uh, we will look at doing retail, but I would say we're going to wait until probably the third or fourth quarter until we get a better sense of how everything is transitioning uh, with the economy on everything. Convene a cohort for housing. Once we have the housing study done, is our intent to bring developers, financial institutions, um, local governments together, and I will say legislators will probably invite you as well, to start really hammering out the details of how do we get 
affordable single family housing. And when I mean affordable, a 2008 uh, price tag on a $170,000 home, and I saw this number, so it's not exact, so I apologize. But a 170,000 home in 2008, 2000 time frame is around 220,000 today because of construction materials, cost of land, all those things. We have to get back to how do we manage that? And that goes from policies on the state level, from TIF and how we use TIF for housing, uh, to how we uh, have zoning codes that match up uh, with the needs of affordable housing. Transportation, uh, I would just note that our commuting patterns for the county, 86% um, of the residents in the county live and work in the county. And we have great employers. What's shocking to me is we get around 6% coming from Manitowoc, 2% uh, coming from Fond du Lac, and the other, you can do the numbers, we have 2% uh, around. Sheboygan County needs to be a destination for employment, and we are. And so we just need to get that word out more than we have. But transit, daycare, all those barriers to people getting to work uh, needs to be a part of our strategy and statement one to get that more people, 25 to 44, living and working in Sheboygan County. And we're going to update our website, so that's more internal uh, for us. Any questions? All right. Statement number two, and this is again, retain, train, and uh, a workforce and attract. Um, we have really, I, we had a partnership, um, well, we have a partnership, sorry about the phrasing there. We have a partnership with the uh, Chamber for Someplace Better. I would just say uh, Someplace Better needs a complete revamp. Um, I view Someplace Better, and I think the uh, board, and now I hopefully think the, our, uh, the Human Resources Director, that's our closing website. As in, people are getting an offer, or they are truly thinking about relocating, and that's where they're going to get all the information of what's their budget, what's the cost of housing, all of that, and the calculators to make informed decisions. Right now, it's a good quality of life piece, and it, it's good, but it is not making, helping people make critical life-changing decisions, and that's what that website has to be about. It also has to say whether you're in, the amenity is in Sheboygan County or surrounding, like an hour from here, the lifestyle that you can have here is amazing, and that's why it is someplace better. And so right now it's on the edge, uh, but we need to really enhance that. Talent relationship management. Anybody with a connection to Sheboygan County, whether they grew up here and left when they were in, a, in elementary school or left in college or they uh, had a family where I had to relocate to Madison to take care of family, we want to maintain that relationship. That is mission critical to us as employers in the county and as an economic development strategy, regardless of pay scale, okay? Regardless of pay scale and skill sets, things of that nature. Talent Recruiter Online Sales Kit, we'll talk a little bit about that. And the last thing is Employers Education Exchange, how can we collaborate better on talent and skill development? And so we have had conversations with some of the educational institutions, and we're truly looking at now how we can align our employers on some of those strategies. So our first proposals that were given uh, to the HR cohort for feedback was a recruitment response kit um, and talent community, and then the revamp of someplace uh, better. The sales kit. The way I, I phrase it is an online tool. We'll have up to 50 companies being able to use the same license. As you can imagine, I think there's probably 50 companies out there recruiting talent, whether it's regionally or nationally or globally, to get people to relocate here. 
And they're all responding to similar questions of, hey, I'm a single parent. How do we, uh, where do I find my, uh, the community for my child that's in middle school or whatever? We want to make sure that as companies learn and or respond, that uh, the people that do a lot of recruiting on a day-to-day -day basis um, share their expertise and collaborate with the companies that might only recruit four times a year, four positions a year, so that those templates for emails is actually going to be a collaboration of those 50 companies. I call it the Disney script for Sheboygan County. So you think of your, Shibu uh, your Disney experience, you have scripts. Well, we're going to start doing that by lifestyle, by age, age of kids, all those types of different communities that will build that sense of belonging so that people can envision that they can live and work here and have the best time of their life here. Uh, and of course, we'll be referring that back to uh, the Someplace Better website. Our website is going to be completely revamped, tied to those responses going to talent. Okay, so if somebody is uh, getting an email from one of the recruiters, and by the way, not all the recruiters live and work in Sheboygan County. So the uh, what happens on with Sales Kit is you might have a recruiter in Chicago. They email, hey, this is the question that this person we're trying to recruit here here has, and then they ask the HR director. Then the HR director kind of starts talking about who they, what they think their best answer is, and then they respond. We need to, that bottleneck has to be modified, and we think Sales Kit will do that. But that will then get us to those questions, and how we respond to those questions will directly feed into the content of Someplace Better, so that the content of Someplace Better is truly tied to the deliverables that talent want. Okay? Company we keep. Um, Right now, there's a job feed uh, from Indeed and a couple other sources into uh, Someplace Better. I think that's a disservice to the companies that we keep here. We have locally owned companies that are global in nature and or regional in nature, but they're locally owned and they're committed to the community. That's our selling point, okay? So we will be making a true emphasis on showing the local um, commitment and local brands that our companies have. Uh, and so they'll still have job, their access to the career pages, things of that nature. But we are not going to have a job board where uh, the one I always, uh, I'll just say the day I made the decision we were going to have a job board was the day I saw Amazon hiring in Random Lake. I just didn't think that was the type of job we wanted on someplace better. Nothing against Amazon. But that's not our goal. Comparison tools. Again, going back to how uh, and what will make you want to live and work in, uh, and how do you make family or life choices. And it's going to be tied to topics and locations. So easy one is a paycheck calculator. If you're moving from one part of the state to another or different states across the border, coming from Illinois, coming into Wisconsin, that's an easy calculator, but uh, again, we can do that for many different factors from housing, rental units, things of that nature. In the new content I'm going to uh, go to is really social media let fed. We have amazing amenities here, and it can be tied to how um, the different, peop uh, different people um, engage in the environment that we have, the different activities from the art center to the museums to the storybook garden, uh, story, is it storybook garden park or? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I'm still learning. <laughs> so we want to do social media feeds and have um, the people of Sheboygan sell it. So uh, at the January 28th meeting, uh, employee resource groups, uh, those are groups within larger companies that are tied to areas of interest. Uh, we have engaged them to 
uh, start um, sharing and or having intentional collisions with activities that are interest uh, of that population uh, in the community. And so that we can start having continuously new content uh, going into someplace better. When we talk about the talent community, we will have a, a monthly newsletter that goes out to talent that are part of the talent community tied to every level of job being created um, throughout the county. And again, making sure that they are, whether it's now or six months or two years from now, we continually to send the message that this is the place for them to be. Uh, the talent community, um, Sargento has started a talent community. They have a forum over there. I know the chamber, they're the BEP uh, committee has talked about a talent community. And this is the audience that would be getting the newsletter. And I just want to state from our meeting on the 28th to now, we're going to be uh, adding hourly, uh, trying to figure out an hourly uh, production staff um, strategy specifically for the talent community and how it works. But also, uh, I've already directed our um, marketing staff to start developing a campaign. We were looking at a fall build out of campaigns, but now we will start looking at a spring build out of a campaign tied to hourly. And again, that regional brand employer of choice uh, throughout this uh, region. So haven't figured out this, what we're going to do there yet, uh, but based on the feedback, um, we want to be able to do that. Uh, so again, build out in 21, design campaigns in the fall, but we're going to do an hourly, uh, we're coming up with an hourly strategy in the spring and full implementation in 2022. And I would just note, uh, since we have legislators here, I would just note that uh, WDC uh, in the governor's budget, um, previous years there was a special allocation for talent recruitment into the state in the five to six million range. That is zeroed out in this, the governor's budget um, as from the agencies. So WDC is putting zero toward talent recruitment. I would just say, if you look at our needs in the county, uh, talent recruitment and building our brand is mission critical. So just a concern that um, at the local level, uh, as of right now, this is entirely on us and we have to take ownership of it, okay? There's tools that the state has invested in over the years and we can access those tools and make that happen here, but truly it's on us to make it happen. Statement number four, is tied to uh, business resiliency and inclusion. The resiliency grants, and again, we're doing business retention where we'll do the normal face-to-face, uh, -face, but we're also trying to work through the financial institutions to get to anybody that is being impacted by COVID uh, uh, from the hospitality standpoint, things in other sectors. Um, so we're, we're doing electronic surveys now uh, where it's uh, those 10 questions I showed you earlier. And if they answer yes to any of them, uh, there's an appointment, virtual or in person, depending on the comfort of the company. On the far right hand side, uh, I would just note that uh, we'll have a business plan contest the, uh, for the first time, I believe, in the county. Uh, and it will be tied to uh, really looking at um, gaps in services or uh, products that have been identified by the customer base. And that could be by the employee resource groups. Uh, it could be tied to what we're hearing from the HR directors. All of those things come to, into play because at the end of the day, remember the four things we're about is getting more people here, getting them uh, working and trained and be able to be employed. And so diversity and inclusion and then the whole affordability of housing. All those pillars are going to be part of the focus. We're going to be asking, anybody can submit a business concept, business strategy, but we're also going to be saying, how are you going to help us resolve our problems or barriers for growth in the county as part of this? And right, we've allocated only 10,000, but uh, I anticipate that, well, I've been directed by the board and I offered this, uh, that we will be approaching 
financial institutions and others, foundations, et cetera, to do um, a Community Reinvestment Act type investments so that our goal is that we can have three award winners and we actually prov can provide um, a stipend for housing uh, so that they truly can focus in on the business and not where they get their next paycheck to make uh, their family whole. And then the County Revolving Loan Fund that uh, was adopted by the County Board in um, December. Uh, we will be looking at um, relaunching the County uh, Revolving Loan Fund in uh, first meeting will probably be in March. Uh, and the eligible activities and things of that nature will be part of it. Again, I talked about that already. You've seen the questions I've asked. So you, just a reminder, this is why you call Chad or myself or any uh, economic development related uh, person in the county. Uh, it's really tied to those, those are natural activities and businesses really don't understand when they can access our services. So take advantage of it. In our capital formation, so the first step was to really do the business resiliency grant, uh, really trying to deal with COVID. But over the next two years, uh, we do anticipate creating funds tied to provisional patents, prototype fund, and customer feedback. We have to get that startup e economy going, and that is the goal of the board. Our innovation strategy was adopted in uh, January, I want to say 18th. Um, it just seems, 18th always seems to come up, but uh, so the board adopted our action plans in December, innovation strategy in January. So, um, and my board chair actually mentioned that after we adopted that, he got the most emails he uh, had seen just because of the presentation and the direction we were going. And they were positive thumbs up uh, comments. The other thing I would just note is we also will very definitely be looking at how we connect to equity so equity should not be an issue in this market, but we want to make sure that it's aligned with the needs of the entrepreneur and that we do this as effectively and painlessly for both the customer, the entrepreneur, and the investor. So our financing needs. In statement number five of five strategies, and this is really tied to our innovation uh, strategy. Again, uh, engagement network is the surge. Uh, you've heard that uh, Nick O'Brien has been working that um, virtually for the last uh, six to nine months. Um, but that is trying to make sure, again, uh, that people that are entrepreneurial or creatives in mindset have a place that they feel comfortable to share ideas and start commiserating or, hey, I have this problem. How did you get around this problem? And so in the last week, we've had a couple of calls at the EDC about this is a product, and we've started to try to identify what's their path, pathway forward uh, for a company that is having challenges, uh, as many might be in this economy. Launch of a seed accelerator, Internet of Things, in the Small Business Development Center. Again, I mentioned earlier that we aren't rated very high on a national level from an MSA for small business. However, when Sheboygan County invests in a small business, it's capital intensive. They, they have good investors and they have people backing them. So from 2015 to 2019, our startups, our small businesses, had $47 million invested in them in capital formation, ranked number one county in the state. We just need to start having more of those activities um, because right now, again, those are some projects are seven million dollar investments. Uh, so we, well, I think, last year we had fifteen million dollars in investment. One project was seven. So we need more of that, and we need to build that spirit. But I, I want to just stress that uh, we have. I think as good of infrastructure in the county already to support that growth than I've seen in other markets. 
I think Ray York does an excellent job with our small business programming. But the small business plan contest that I mentioned earlier will be under the small business efforts as well as some of the other activities. But these are all the services that you can get from the EDC, SC EDC, uh, that Ray can, has access. Again, that's a partnership between the SC EDC and UWGB. And so that we can actually access resources of the university to help support our businesses at the local level. Our local innovation uh, community programming, seed accelerator. Does everybody know what an accelerator is? Probably not. A seed accelerator is basically we want to have five to six companies that are equity ready or uh, we are trying to get them equity ready so that um, we're looking at them. We would provide a $10,000 basically startup fund and then they would be trying to, um, we would try to get their business model and product uh, designed so that they would be equity ready for at least a 500,000 to more investment. Uh, so it's really trying to, in an eight, in a eight session time frame, over three to four months, we're tr trying to get from good concept to solid concept with uh, value proposition, minimal viable product to go to market and get investment. Engagement models, again, making sure that we get anybody that is from arts to innovators within companies, we want them to be part of this community uh, and know that their uh, efforts and risk taking is supported. We'll do pitch competitions, we'll do hackathons, uh, Maker Fair with the library, we're going to be partnering, I believe that's city and the library, uh, we'll be partnering on that and also student-run businesses, whether at the high school or the university level. And in 2022, I would say same thing, but we're gonna to try to do co two cohorts. And just to give you a sense of the accelerator model, we were looking at buying it off the shelf. It's a million dollar investment by the EDC if we would buy it from somebody else. So we are needing to build our own and work with corporate talent within the county to make this happen, okay? There are companies that have that skill set here and we are going to uh, try to work with them to make sure that we have a world-class accelerator that uh, can complete, compete globally. Our Internet of Things. So probably uh, two years ago, uh, you had a, a local res resident that um, came with a proposal to start something called the Wisconsin Asso Internet of Things Council or like a statewide trade association for people that are trying to make their products smart using the internet. So uh, whether that's in the healthcare, uh, uh, et cetera, across the board. Uh, right now they have 36, I think 36 members, but you can start seeing some of the corporate members that are there that come to Sheboygan as the Internet of Things is home here. So uh, right now the EDC is working with the Internet uh, Council, Internet of Things Council, uh, and actually exploring curriculum on certifications that we can bring to this market to make sure that we retain that leadership uh, statewide uh, so that companies, when they start thinking about uh, smart technologies, they consider Sheboygan. Sheboygan County. Our resiliency grant, again, uh, $500 for search engine optimization. Uh, search engine optimization, and if they need an e commerce solution added to that, we'll go up to 1000 We only have a $30,000 budget, so it's, um, if you know somebody that is in dire need, uh, very definitely get that out. Uh, we uh, Financial institutions should have this already. If not, just talk to me afterwards. Uh, and I sent that out to all the chambers today uh, throughout the county. And I know Chad has that for the city as well. Uh, it's a one-page application. We want the money out to support businesses. So we need your help to get the word out and make sure that the businesses are, that um, can really 
that need it can access it. Reminder, if you haven't been invited to a cohort, we are about engagement, about collaboration across the board, across industry sectors, whether it's production staff to uh, professional staff, everybody's part of this county and part of our community. Questions? I had 16 seconds left. <laughs> I'll repeat. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan, uh, welcome to Sheboygan County and wish you well in your work. You're joining a very good organization and has contributed a lot to, to the county. What is the current unemployment rate in Sheboygan County? Sure. I, 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 was, I haven't looked at it in the last month or two, uh, but I believe it would be in the low uh, 3%. I, Angela probably knows that off that. Nope. I would say in the low 3% range. Uh, and I would, uh, as long as I uh, bring up unemployment, and I just want to reiterate this, for housing, uh, I just, uh, at the state level, uh, anything you can do, uh, I know the Wisconsin Economic Development Association, which I kind of uh, have some loyalty to, there's two policies that I think really could help communities on affordable housing. One is uh, currently in TIF law, you have one year at the end of a TIF when you're about to close it where you can use that toward affordable housing. The proposal that we have right now is to extend that to three years so that we truly can make a difference on making investments and in getting affordable housing there. And the other uh, policy change would be right now the uh, most that housing can be as part of a TIF is 35%. We would ask that that just be upped a little bit so that um, I think the proposal was 60, but anything above 35% would just be a benefit so that the communities have more flexibility uh, to do what, um, because the construction costs, development costs, are just continuing going through the sky, and it's impossible to pencil it out for a $170,000 home. And so that's critical for economic development and affordable housing for us to hit target. So, other questions? Yes? You had, uh, you had mentioned earlier unemployment obviously being as low as it is um, and even pre-COVID I mean it was around 3% or less Correct. than 3% um, and earlier in your presentation you talked about um, creating an environment that you know people we've got great things in Sheboygan County and obviously the quality of life and all the variety of things that people can do is there going to be a um, kind of a, a, a push I mean Pregnancies are going down, reproduction is going down. Um, how are we going to transplant enough people to Wisconsin and Sheboygan County in, in, you know, specifically to be able to fill some of these jobs that you know, are already filled, but a lot of companies are looking at, hey, you know, once the economy gets rolling again, we're gonna be adding yep. more jobs and expansion. Yep. So the question was really how do we, um, how we continue? Uh, how are we going to get more people here uh, as the aging of the population uh, occurs uh, throughout the state and in the county? Um, without a doubt, we're going to have to do a marketing campaign, and that's where WDC was doing that at the state level, um, and they were focused on very uh, specific targets such as the veterans, things of that, uh, people like that. But we will uh, be doing a uh, ongoing campaign. But the key thing from my perspective is that our tools have to be able to be used by local companies in their marketing. Because we don't have a big enough budget uh, to put a dent in the uh, thousands of people that we need in to fill jobs uh, over the next decade. Um, so we need to leverage their budgets and their uh, recruiters and make sure that we as a community and the county through someplace better can close that deal for them because um, and that's from a talent perspective trying to recruit production workers and convincing them to relocate actually I think that's not as it's a tough proposition because traditionally production workers won't relocate but when you start looking at the type of companies that we have here, 
that are family owned. They're not a number in a corporation necessarily, in a Fortune 500 company. That's the type of stuff that we have to do locally here and sell that in someplace better because then they won't they'll get that sense of community that is truly, at least from my perspective, in four months on the job, is what differentiates Sheboygan County and this market. Yes, Mayor. Uh, Brian, first of all, thanks for coming to Sheboygan and blessing us and sharing with us the great things you saw about uh, our, our area. Uh, it's been great to work with you. Um, but in your presentation, you talked a little bit about establishing contact with people who grew up in Sheboygan and have left for one reason or another. And uh, I, I think that there's some heartstrings that tug on people once in a while to come back to the community that they grew up in and so their kids can be raised here. And also sometimes as your parents age, you need to be there to help them out. But how do you plan on, on orchestrating this strategy? Well, that's still a work in progress. So, so, so the question was is um, uh, getting uh, people with connections to Sheboygan County to come back. How do we uh, plan to implement that? Um, and it, again, that strategy is something that we're going to be building uh, over time, over the summer and into the fall, um, and be working with our uh, employers and their recruiting strategists and saying, how does it work for you? But at the end of the day, I would anticipate some very simple stuff of working with the municipalities, maybe having inserts in the tax bills, or um, doing a postcard at Christmas time or holidays, uh, making sure that um, people that have uh, grandkids, well, maybe they get the newsletter so that they can forward it on, so that the kids can start adding on incrementally. The, the talent community. It's hard for me to determine the size of the talent community in year one, but um, I guess I will just say over a three to four year period, that better be over 10,000 people that at some point in their life, they want to get back. Maybe it's not right time because their kids are uh, still um, um, being thought about or they haven't found their mate yet or whatever, the boomerang effect. At least when I was in Eau Claire, we ran a similar program in Eau Claire. And it was typically for Eau Claire to Minneapolis. Uh, um, it was around 28, 29 is when we could start seeing people come back. And the challenge in that market in Eau Claire was we didn't have enough positions for people that were fresh out of college. So you needed two to three years experience to get um, certain types of jobs in that market. That's some of the things that we're going to try to analyze over the first six months of 2021 is really looking at what type of jobs uh, and certifications, et cetera, that employers hire and where are the skill sets tied to that. So that reverse searches for um, partners or spouses, that if they have somebody that has an offer but they don't know if their uh, partner can get a job, that should be an easy short list for that partner to say, hey, we have four companies. Old Wisconsin could be one of them. How do I and make sure that they have the ability to connect? Sheboygan County is a small county. If we can't talk to each other and really collaborate on that, then we're going to have a tough time accomplishing the goal of changing that net in migration and building the labor pool that all of our employers need. Otherwise, the scary thing for me is if we don't increase the population, expansions will happen elsewhere. Concerning spouse thing, that, that already happens. We just don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, well, so, yeah. there's a network. Our folks will email each other and say, I have a trailing spouse. But, but, that, yeah. but that means, again, for production people, are they going to ask that question or not? And so I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. We need to make that online so that they get that comfort level immediately. That has to be the part of the experience of someplace better on the website because if they if they have a hesitancy at all, we're turning them off to the county and to the employers in this market. So we have to be proactive and make it as user-friendly as possible 
so that, again, we always put our best foot forward. Our companies do. It's time for us to do that from a community and um, development perspective. Thanks for expanding on that strategy, and let me know how I can help. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Other questions? We've got a couple more minutes. I was, I was just going to say you're going to get like five minutes left. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for, for enlightening us today. Appreciate it. A um, couple of quick announcements. Number one, the gala, Chamber Gala, has only 30 seats left. So if you want to spot the Chamber Gala, you need to register and register soon. Um, the next First Friday Forum will be March 5th, and we'll be featuring mayoral candidates. So we'll be down to two by then. So mayoral candidates next month. I know one of them is in the audience today, hoping to hoping to be there, too. We had... I don't know if we got two or we just have the one today. Um, anyway, so extremely limited attendance for that. So capacity, so for capacity, so we'll have you register early for that as well. Also, lastly, want to say thank you to our sponsor, Purveya Health, and thank you to the Elks Club for hosting this wonderful meal today. Thank you all. See you next month.